Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to do a merge in Power Query. So this would be similar to a VLOOKUP where we create a connection between two tables, but we're going to use Power Query for this. And this was a great question uh, submitted by Bill Evans over on our blog. So thank you, Bill, for answer asking this question. Here we have a table of data, and this is a table of order data, where we have uh, each row is an order or a transaction. And here we have a customer ID column. But what we want to do is pull in the customer information, and we have that information over here in this customer's table. So we have the customer ID here. This would be the matching value between the two tables. And then we have information about each customer. So we want to bring this data into our orders table. And we can use Power Query for this and the merge. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go back over to the customer customers table, and we're going to create a connection only to this table, a query, a connection only query. So we'll select any cell inside this table, we'll go to the data or power query tab, and then we're going to choose from table or range. That'll bring up the Power Query Editor. Now, if you're not familiar with Power Query yet, I do have a separate video of an overview of Power Query. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So now that we have our query open, all we need to do with this query is again, just create that connection only. So we're going to go to the Home tab, click the bottom half of the Close and Load button, choose Close and Load to, That'll bring up the uh, import data window. We're going to choose only create connection and then hit OK. And that's just going to create a connection in Power Query to this table. And now we're going to bring it in to our orders table. So we'll jump back over to our order sheet. Again, select any cell inside the orders table here. Do the same thing, data or Power Query tab, and then choose from table or range. And I should also mention that this data could come from a different source. It does not need to come from an Excel table. This could be a CSV file. You could be connecting directly to a database or the web or anything like that. Uh, just to make this easy, I've put both of these in tables, but the data could come from other sources. So now that we have the uh, query editor open, uh, this is pretty simple. We're going to go to the uh, Home tab here and click Merge Queries. And that'll bring up this merge window. And you can see here at the top half of it, we have our orders table. And we're going to select the column that we want to do the lookup with. So this is going to be the customer ID column. So I'll just click that to select it. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to select the table that we want to do the lookup into. So that'll be our orders table. And again, we've created the connection for that. So that's why we're seeing that in our list here. And from here, we'll just also select the column, the matching column. So you can see we have the customer ID column and the ID column are the matching columns. They do not need to have the same header name because we're able to select the matching columns here. Now down below that, we have the join kind. If you're familiar with database terminology, uh, these are database terms, uh, the joins. And here we're going to do a left outer join. And we do get a little description here. There's other options, but the left outer is the default and the most common. And that's going to return all the results from the first table. That's what it means by all from first and the matching results from the second table. And that's what we want, because when we output this query to a table to use in our workbook, we still wanna see all of the orders here, even if there's not a matching result. And you can see that down here. It says at the bottom, the selection matches 221 of 306 rows from the table. So we have some items that aren't matching. And I'm going to explain how to fix that and resolve that. So that's okay for now. We'll just say okay for now. And that's going to add this new column to our table here. And you can see it's called TBL customers. And within each of those cells, we have this table. And if you just click in the blank area over to the right here, you can actually see the matching values here for this particular row. Now, what we want to do is expand that out. So we're going to click the expand button right here. And this will give us a list of all of the columns in our customer's table. And we can uncheck the ID column because we don't need to bring it in twice. We already have a column with the customer ID. You can leave that checked if you'd like. Uh, the other thing I'll uncheck is this use original column header name as prefix because that would just put the word TBL customers in front of each column name, which we do not need. And then we'll hit OK. And that will expand out our columns. So essentially we've done a VLOOKUP 
and we've done a VLOOKUP for all of these columns here. All five of these columns are doing that VLOOKUP and returning the values. Now, this is not a VLOOKUP, but it's just similar to a VLOOKUP in Excel. That's why I'm saying it's, it's kind of like a VLOOKUP. So now that we have this data here, and you'll also notice we have some rows with nulls in it. So this is a blank. This means that Power Query could not find the matching value for that customer ID. So if we go over here in that row, uh, that's this customer ID is 10. If we jump over here to the queries pane and we can look at our customer's table, we only have the row ID or the customer ID up to nine. So we don't have 10 or anything beyond that. So that's why we're having some uh, blanks here. But again, that's okay. We'll fix that and I'll show how to fix that. So now that we have this, uh, we'll go back to our orders table and we can close this pane for now. And we're just going to close and load this. So now I'm going to hit the top half of the split button to do a normal close and load. And what that's going to do is add a new table, I'm sorry, new sheet to the workbook with our output table. So again, here's all of our orders data. And if we scroll over to the right, we can now see that information, uh, the customer information over here in the right hand columns. So let's take a look at how to fix these blank rows. Like I said, we didn't have all the customer information over here in our table. Uh, so I do have new information down here. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to hit Control C to copy that and then add it to the bottom of our table. I'll just paste it right here. Table automatically expands to include this new information. So now we have these new customers in our list. And this is going to happen with your data as well. Over time, you're going to get a new lookup values, whether it's customers or something else. You're going to get new lookup values and you'll be maintaining this table uh, with those values. Now you can also automate this step with Power Query, uh, but we'll leave that for a separate video, depending on where your customer information is stored. But for now, we've updated this table here. So in order to see that, all we need to do is refresh our query. So we'll go back over to our new sheet. We're going to right click anywhere in the table here, hit refresh, keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. That's going to very quickly rerun the query. And as you can see now, we have results for those customers. And Power Query has also changed the sort order there. And that's why we're seeing duplicates of that existing customer. So that can be also be controlled within the Power Query editor. If you want to change the sort order or apply a sort order to a specific column, uh, you can do that in Power Query. So essentially we've automated this process. Like I've said in all my videos with Power Query, we're automating data cleanup processes. And what I mean by that is as you get new orders, uh, regardless of where that is, it could be an orders table here in the workbook, or we could be connecting to a database that contains our orders. As those new orders come in, uh, or if we get new customers or customer information changes here, we delete customers, whatever that is, as these tables and these sources are updated, in order to then update our output query, all we need to do is right click, refresh it. And then if there's any pivot tables that use this table as its source, we refresh those pivot tables as well. Or if we have formulas, those formulas are automatically calculated or recalculated as the data changes here. And any summary reports, pivot tables, charts, and dashboards that we have connected are automatically updated as well. So this is the first step really in the data cleanup process. Now, if you're not familiar with Power Query yet or Power Pivot or Pivot Tables, Macros and VBA or any of these tools, uh, we have a free webinar run running right now. It's called the Modern Excel Blueprint. I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can go check that out. It's absolutely free to register and sign up for a time and watch that. And that'll help you learn how to implement all these tools into your workflow, save a ton of time with your job and become the Excel hero of the office. So I hope this has helped you. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.